it had started like wildfire, eating through nations, leaving behind an ugly scene. It spared no one, neither old nor young. We were too blinded to see what was going on, neither too kid. We parted, interacted, shook hands, throwing caution to the wind. Then, disaster struck. And fellow Kenyans, I want to inform you that the Ministry of The Health first case got reported. The first coronavirus case in Kenya. Panic set in, but not for too long. We were diehards. We continued the normal way of life. As the days went by, more and more cases were confirmed. But who are we? The diehards. The president and his delegates, knowing it was getting out of hand, spoke to the country. He enforced a curfew that would last from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. the following morning. But we didn't care. Some of us took him seriously, but others didn't. And that was the beauty of the country. The law enforcers knew they had duties to attend to. We saw them exercising and flexing their muscles. Who knew what they were up to? Nobody. Then came the first day of curfew. Whips echoed the air. Tear gas blinded our eyes. We were chased down like animals. It was not yet time for curfew, but we couldn't argue with the law enforcers since they clearly looked like they were doing their job. To us, it seemed as if a switch had been flipped off when the president directed the law enforcers to manage the curfew. Women and children were neither spared the brutality of the officers. Cries from the women echoed the air. We ran and ran to get away, but there was no place to hide. Time was quickly running out, dawning in the night. We were bundled into heaps. Heaps of people that had no gear to protect themselves from the virus. It was chaos. Utter chaos. Later that night, more chaos erupted as we received a mere crack of the whip. The sounds of whips landing on our bodies echoed the air. <laughs> It was like the clock had been reversed back to high school, where teachers poked with the cane while you received. Not even the authorized staff was spared. They all received the same treatment, the whip treatment. It was a night we couldn't forget. The next morning woke an angry people as we took to social media to protest. Video clips of us getting whipped had gone viral. Headlines from different TV stations all had the same message. The curfew. Things were getting out of hand. We were angry. The president took the initiative to apologize. There were some challenges. And I want to apologize to all Kenyans. Maybe for some excesses. This calmed us. A little. But only the slightest bit. As the days went by, while more cases got reported, we were eagerly waiting for the end of the curfew. We were tired of the curfew, of the officers, of the virus, and of everything. Some of us opted to die from the virus than from the officers. On the D-Day, the president addressed the country. He gave a good long speech which we weren't paying attention to, since we were waiting for him to announce the end of the curfew. But all hopes were lost to the wind as he announced a 21-day curfew extension. The nationwide dusk to dawn curfew that is currently in force will be extended for a further period of 21 days up to and until the 6th of June 2020. Here we go again.
was the message that shone on everyone's mouth. As the days went by, June 6th became the most important topic of conversations and most important date in people's minds. It was like the official closing date for most schools. Conversations had changed to June 6th. We were eagerly waiting to go back to normality. Normal to us was having to wake up in the morning going around with the usual businesses, interacting with people carefree, and going back home at any time we felt like. That was normal to us.